What were you just doing right now that was really funny and annoying at the same time? Existing. Okay. All right. So today is a hot day in the valley and I picked up our son from school just now and they gave us these stacks of his artwork that he's done since his first day. We also got a picture of him sitting on a pony in cowboy gear, smiling his face off. So cute. Can't wait to send them all to his grandparents in registered, um, heavily padded mail. Do not bend photos. Wasn't that the cutest picture you've ever seen of your son? Mm, I don't know about ever. I've seen some, uh, some pretty so, cute pictures of my son. So guys, last night before bed, I pulled up this picture of my son, our son, and I showed it to him. He was playing with the Tupperware in the kitchen and like looking super cute in Mickey, Mickey Mouse PJs. My husband says to me, he's just never going to be that small again. And I go, yeah, so... I think you might have shed a tear. You said it sucked or something like I that. Didn't shed a tear. And I was like, it's well, okay. We'll be, be okay. Small. He's swinging a bat and hitting baseballs with you now. Yes. So, like, that's why we're grateful for these photos. Yes. That we can look back on them. And we probably have about 75,000 photos of him per day of his whole life. Thank God. iCloud, whatever, wherever they, they keep them. <laughs> so, it's a hot, hot, hot summer day. We need to be drinking icy, low-calorie beverages and losing weight and working out. But there you are, down in the Bud Light. Well, this is probably like the best thing, the healthiest thing I'll drink today or put in my body. There you go, Bud Light Betty. I'm refraining from high-caloric margaritas and hard liquor tequila, so I'm just having a Bud Light. I should have probably like two or three of those. And then do cardio, and I should like lose 25 pounds by the end of this month. I'm on the sidelines here rooting you on, kid. Uh, I believe in you. Uh, today, till the dirt, Tommy and MJ. Today we're going to talk about your favorite thing to make fun of me about, which is the first time you saw me cry. Well, yeah, it's so, one of my favorite things to like make fun of. Like, usually yes. when people think like, oh, the first time she cried, you would be holding me and caressing and comforting me, but you never do that today. So that was a telltale sign that you're the least comforting husband a woman will could ever marry. Yeah, she... Uh at this point, my buddy Jamie had died, and then a week after Jamie died, my buddy Bobby died. She came to the funeral with Bobby. I had not seen her cry ever, but the one thing that brought her to tears, I mean, brought her to weeping, weeping like, like a schoolgirl. What was it, babe? I thought Ryan Seacrest was 100% going to heli me in to Coachella directly to the Rose Garden, which is a place that not even the artists can get into because it's above VIP and artist passes. This is an intimate section discreetly located between the main stage and the VIP owned by the Hagen family who owned the polo fields. Nothing is higher than that. And not only did I find out that I wasn't getting that or artist a pass or even technically not even a VIP pass, so I didn't have access to, to Coachella or the polo grounds adjacent place we always would stay, which I shouldn't be telling you guys where I stay because it's the dopest place to stay, and it's PGA West. Wah, she was, which is a I, golf course. I, I can't believe I'm not going. I, I want every year since Coachella's been around. I was going before anybody was going. I was going, and now I'm not even going to go. So for any of you guys who are blessed enough in life to make the right choices to have gone to Coachella enough times to be familiar with 52nd and 54th Street. So 50th and Monroe is where the main entrance is. If you could be on 52nd, you'd be on one of the parking streets. If you were on 54th, you're at PGA West. So it was the dopest place to stay. And I found out that I wasn't for like three seconds. I found out that like I didn't have the tickets I thought I was going to have. Seconds, three I ended up, of course, going. But at this point, point in time yo she's lying to I, you folks she i was is, here we are crying. years later she is lying to you folks she was distraught i'm talking for like two days she had these big designs on going in a big way so people are calling her like yo do you want tickets and she's like no they're gonna fly me in and i'm gonna go in a helicopter and pretty much and then so these tickets are coming and going they're coming because and going. when i was a realtor and i didn't have any reality tv association i had no problem getting artist passes prior to the show i had more connections than being on 
a network or attached to Ryan Seacrest. God, you know, like I love you, Ryan, but Bravo doesn't have the cloud because if you're going to get into Coachella, you have to be like Billy Joel's daughter. You have to be like rock royalty or performing at Coachella. Like you're not going to get in anymore. People used to like, I could get in through the, like the art director who was putting the carnival together. Now it's so commercialized. It's different. So whatever. So like now it's more people, it's more generic. It's like quote, Coachella fashion is a thing now. That wasn't a thing. Anyway, I have a lot of Coachella pride is what I'm saying. Oh. And you will never be to a Coachella. And I'll hopefully one day. I went to Coachella. Dra- Coachella. I'd rather stand outside and have the people walking in burn me with cigarettes than have to go to Coachella. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just hanging out in the desert in 150 degree heat, running from place to place to watch a DJ spin records. And then you got to go poop in a metal can. Who said the- anything about about having to poop nobody eats when they go to Coachella you just have lemon water and you know vodka in Dixie cups that cost $48 yeah yeah that's the other part then you got to run Mostly ice. to get a bottle of water that costs seventy five fifty. so we know you're lying because no one would ever take a shit at Coachella so that already oh, I, I've shit I've you, shit you've I, lost I your cre- Coachella you've lost your credibility I've shit plenty I've shit plenty. Ew, Plus, I know me. you. You ain't not shitting for fucking three days. Shh. There's no way. There's no way. We're not. And again, we're not talking about this. We're not. We're not leaving. Yeah, we're but not, Coach- we're not leading into Coachella with how many times you pooped. In fact, don't even ever say that you poop. You can just tell the people that you never. Yeah, I don't. I don't shit. I yeah. don't. I don't. I'm special. No, we should That's talk about it. That's my superhero no, we should talk strength, about it. is that I don't poop. We should talk about it, though, in one, like, no, right now. We should now. talk about Let's poop. Let's elaborate. Let's, let's totally elaborate on, on poop, <laughs> on, on my bowel movements. That's definitely what the people want to hear. Anyway, so then what happens? Yeah, so... Oh, so can I just tell you what I wanted to, to, like, can I tell you what is important to me about that weekend and this story? Go ahead. Okay. You are the most self-confident man. You have, like, full trust in me. Because two of my guy friends come to pick me up and one of them is 6'6", six, six, the other one is 6'3". They're both pretty good looking guys. They're not like on the cover of GQ, but they're not also like someone that a girl won't end up having sex with. Like if you picked up the female equivalent of the guys that I was with, it would have been reasonable that you would have been attracted to them and had sex with them if the situation were reversed. Now you were so self-confident about like, hey baby, have the best time. Like you didn't twitch or show like some kind of discomfort once you saw the guys actually putting my luggage pieces in their car in the SUV one was like there were two really nice vans and we like caravan down there and you immediately like I went away thinking I love that I can I can do this because I'm definitely not attracted in the least bit nor have I ever been physically attracted to the guys that I went with. It was totally platonic. In fact, they had girlfriends, but you didn't know any of that. Your attitude was so healthy and trusting that I felt at this point, it hadn't been a whole year yet. It had been like eight months or 10 months that we had been together. So you let me go, assuring me that you were not feeling any kind of way about me going away with like a co-ed weekend to me that's mind-blowing yeah so that weekend when she went you know i'm a big baseball fan i play a lot of softball uh at that time a buddy of mine asked me to fill in for the like they needed an extra player and the game was in santa monica on the weekend and it was like pretty close to where her father was in his retirement home so after i played the game i went to his retirement home and we sat and we played checkers and we hung out for a little bit. And um, oh, you're gonna paint this picture of yourself as the saint. Yeah, basically, that's exactly like, that's ex- while you that's were exactly out what what's what I'm gonna do doing. Because God this is, knows what. This is exactly what happened while she was in Coachella, and I've been there. So it's like as she just said, was doing God knows what. I was hanging out with her dad. Uh-huh. Playing checkers okay. on a Sunday, uh-huh. and then as we discussed, you know, in some of the early podcasts, I wasn't rolling in it uh, financially. You know, while she's out there gallivanting and running amok through the desert, I'm uh, playing checkers with her father at his retirement home. 
Uh, so I didn't have a lot of surplus income. So I, I was still trying to be thoughtful and trying to be romantic. And I thought, all right, what can I do for her? So the night that she's coming back from gallivanting through the desert, I drew her a bath and I put candles and rose petals all over the bathroom. When she comes in, she proceeds to walk into the bathroom, come out, and the first words to her, what were the bed? Do you remember? First of all, you forgot about the part where the apartment was spotless. Yeah. Oh, yes. I cleaned the, so I cleaned the, the place. You're very messy. I cleaned the place. And top you're heavy bottom. handed. You're Godzilla. And yet I come in and the whole mood is set. Clean, smells clean, lights are on the dimmer switch, super low. And then there's a rose petal drawn bath with candles. How many fucking hookers did you have here while I was gone? <laughs> the first thing she says to me was, all right, so who you fucking? Stop saying it like I'm some kind of 95-year-old <laughs> smoker with emphysema, God forbid, That's from, what you sound like in from my head, upstate yo. New York. That's what you That's, sound like I'm in not, my head. I'm not like Ruth from Albany or whatever that was. Albany? Albany is the capital of the state that you come from. Is it? Is yes. it Albany? Yes, it is. Really? I had no idea. I always yes. thought it was Albany. That's what I said. <laughs> okay, you're Albany. right. You had so What's the right. difference between Albany, New York, and Albany? Jesus Christ. Yeah, big difference. But yeah, so she right away accused me. So what's wrong with that? Of running amok myself. Did, did you in that moment think, what a smart girl? <laughs> yeah, totally. That's what I thought. What My a smart girl. Was, wow. Wow. I wish I had an appreciative wife. <laughs> I wish I had an appreciative girlfriend. Shouldn't you have? But a I'd, I'd much rather have a smart one because <laughs> she's smart. She's no flies on her. Any flies on her, they're paying rent. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. So you didn't think that that was a very conspicuous thing to do? It's totally. That's the. And when I was doing it, as I was throwing the petals out, I was like, I want her to think I was fucking everything. Like I want her to think that the reason that Julio's walking funny is because of me. You know what I mean? Like, I got up in everything this weekend. But what was your real intention? I don't know. To do something nice. Why? I was already doing my favorite thing on the planet. I didn't deserve, like, a drawn, rose-petaled candlelit bath. Good to know. I or a clean know. apartment. I deserved a, a dirty apartment. And that's why, ever since then, anytime you leave, when you come before you come back, I usually I piss somewhere in the house and make you want to find it. <laughs> Funny. No, it wasn't. So, anywho, I think that it kind of is what every girl from your neighborhood should think. Just as in the Persian culture, I think it's fair to say that we are suspicious culturally a little bit. But I alone do not think that I'm isolating my yeah, culture. I, th I, th I think that I'm including every smart woman on the planet will have the instinct to be like, hmm. You're downplaying the suspiciousness that goes on within the Persian culture. You the people are all very, 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 very suspicious. <laughs> And it's the perfect word for it. You think everybody uh, is up to something. Go to the library and pick up a book about Persian culture. There's going to be that in yes. the adjective yes. list. Yes. And chapter one Top is going to be be suspicious. Chapter two is going to be take zero accountability. In Farsi, sorry is a four-letter word. Rumor has it there's a statue in Iran of the one guy that ever admitted that he was wrong and people come from near and far to spit at it, throw tomatoes at it and tell him how stupid <laughs> he is and how embarrassed that they are that he was Iranian. So when we were talking about talking about Coachella, what were the other things that you wanted to drag me for? Listen, I thought that it was very enlightening. Again, she had already, you know, her father was in real great shape before she met me. But then, like, it, it was all around the same time. He had taken a little bit of a tumble. So, you know, he, was, he wasn't he was his typical, you know, you could he, see that. By that, tumble, it was like he he broke his his femur. And his cute little bones must have been brittle. Plus, he, like, took a little tumble. So he was starting to lose a little something on his fastball. You could see that he was starting to, he, you know, so she had been throwing through a lot. And again, I I had seen her be iron. I went to a funeral, you know, she like, she was fine. You know, we had had our own fights. Never, she never, but when she couldn't go to Coachella, when, like, it was, like, you know, nine hours. We're counting nine hours till Coachella, and she don't have a wristband? Wow. You never, you never, <laughs> there was kicking, there was screaming, there was, my, 
<laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You gonna be all right? Do I need to call a medic? You gonna be okay? I don't want to get into ages because she would kill me in my sleep. But we're talking a woman of a certain age was stomping her feet because she couldn't go to a concert. And trust me, it, it made me love her more because it was like, I can't believe. Because listen, I'll tell you right now, I can't go to something met oriented that I really wanted to go to. And, you know, all of a sudden, it, I, and, and I thought I was cool about it. Like I said, she was poo-pooing on these people. No, I don't need a ticket. I'm going to, uh, Ryan, Ryan Seacrest is going to give me a piggyback around the, you know, he's going to give me a piggyback. <laughs> and yeah, no, no, I'm good, right. thanks. I'm good, no, That's no, thanks. actually how I imagined we thanks. would dismount from the helicopter. Yes, yes. You're going to, Ryan Seacrest and I are going to take a unicorn uh, into Coachella <laughs> this year and we're going to perform on the main stage. So, mm -hmm, no thanks. Keep your tickets. We could have hot air ballooned it in. Yeah, man. And uh, and like when it finally came in, it was and it was like, nope, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, we don't. So anyway, my <laughs> takeaway was something super positive, but also you kind of probably fell out of love a little bit with me when I like started a fight with you over that. Like, did that do damage on our first no, now again like, was, like, like we discussed in earlier you know i dig crazy chicks for whatever reason you've never I just, said like, that before i like, don't think like britney britney spears i love her but i love her most when she had a head shaved when she really went bad shit is when i was most in love with britney my wife would be on the mount rushmore of bad shit chicks too you know what i mean like she's crazy and that just made me appreciate. I don't think people think of me that way. Uh, well, they should. And if they man do you, if they got to walk around for a little bit with you, they'd be like, oh, wow. Oh, now we get it. She's nuts. Oh, we understand. The people who would think that way about me are the ones that have known me the longest. Yeah, for sure. You are definitely a kooky broad. I mean, I dig it. I totally dig it. But I remember in that moment being like, this bitch is fucking crazy. It's like she literally got, came home picking a fight. And I now, mind you, I still had my own place. You know what I mean? I was there to watch her dogs so that she didn't have to... Worry uh, about it. She didn't have to worry about it. She didn't have yeah, to deal with her lobby. mother. You know, so like, and I was doing her a favor. You know what I mean? I checked in on her pops, you know, made sure he was good because every weekend she would know she would go spend time with him. That weekend she obviously couldn't because she'd be running around uh, the desert with glow sticks and fucking... Yeah. So listen, first of all, I don't have to put a glow stick on and yeah. you don't have to age shame me. And I definitely am appreciative. Oh, not to mention my wife, you know, to get her to walk anywhere, you could use a sundial. It takes a f hours. But to wa you want to watch this woman move? You want to watch that ass shimmy? You throw her into Coachella and you watch her scurry. It's amazing to see. She's like a little pinball just flying around there. Since we're on the topic, I've always wanted to know how come you knew to trust me and how come you didn't feel jealous at all of me leaving town with a couple of guys and a couple of friends, but also that were girls, but also it was a co-ed overnight thing. Like you didn't flinch when you saw those guys. Why? Well, at this point, we've already established that I didn't have... A lot going on the show had already now it had premiered so the show had been on you know like you didn't need to be with me there was no reason for you to be with me unless you really loved me unless you really wanted to be with me so i wasn't concerned about you going you know if you didn't if you were gonna go step out on me why keep me around it just didn't make sense to me so there was no reason to be jealous and then when you combine it with the guys that came to pick you up, I just didn't get that off of them, that those were the type of guys that, one, you would be, like, you would, you know, and you knew them. So, like, you could have already been with them, and they were just, they're nothing like me. That's no disrespect to them. They're just, you know, they're an apple and I'm an orange. I, I, why would, I wasn't concerned that you were going to be going with them when you could have already been with them. So, like, if I got picked up by a couple of guys that were my platonic friends, but they were from, like, Brooklyn, then you might have been more conspicuous? Um, no, I, I, again, cause that goes back to the part A of it, that if you didn't want me, it, like why go running to the desert to gallivant with someone else when you could just say, you know what, Fuck off. it's been fun. Nice to know you. You know what I mean? But I'd rather, you know, go do my, I'm, I'm going to Coachella and mama's going to get some dick. You know what I mean? Like, but like that means there was trust though, too. For sure. You know, I trusted you and I said, we've. 
we were more upfront, and I felt like we were more honest with each other from the get-go. That trust was already kind of, it was innate. It was built in. And that's not to say that I'm like that always, because I've been in plenty of relationships where, well, not plenty, I haven't been in a ton of relationships, but I've been in situations with girls where I've been jealous, you know, and I've been burnt by a girl in the past too, where she was, uh, you know, still doing, doing her other thing. So I've been cheated on. Like I, I'm not immune to that, but with you, I just, I, it didn't make sense to me. It didn't add up. Me cheating didn't compute. Yeah. That wasn't one of my concerns. So does that mean I, that, I mean, is it like you felt loved, you felt trust, you felt like a foundation, like you, because the real thing is that the answer is because why wouldn't I want to have my cake and eat it too? Like people do that to each other all the time. They have somebody at home, but they still want to go out and do whatever the fuck. Maybe even if you weren't jealous of those guys, like I could have done something with anyone in Coachella, well, guy or you. girl or whatever. Right. But look I didn't. And you. you trusted me. I'm just saying, what do you think was going on there with us at that point? Cause that's when you haven't proposed, but we've still been together for a significant amount of time. A while, almost a year, almost a year. And well, we No, you're I, like eight months because when you and I first met, probably took about two months before we started to know, spend I, every I, night I, together. I, I don't know if you know how to count, but to me, eight months is almost a year. No, because there's said, still four whole months left yeah, to make it a year. Yeah, but that's why it's not a year. That's why no. I say it's almost a year. No, almost that's why it's a year almost is a year. 11 and a half months. Oh, really? 11, yeah. uh, okay, okay. Almost a year is not three quarters when there's still 25. Okay. Whole, plus the beginning, there's weird, like there's, there's pauses. Got it. It got was it. when I ghosted you was in got the it. beginning. But I'll say this, you know, when you're talking about days, when you get to our ages, we all of a sudden, you know, relationships for us are like dog years. You know, every day is a lot more time. It's not when you're in your, every you know. Every day is a dog. When you get older, I think you you know what you want a lot more. And, you know, you cut through the bullshit a lot easier. So I think that things speed up faster than they do when, uh, like, you're younger. Sometimes it's intensity. Like, I love them. I can't be apart for them. And it's, you know, but that, that dissipates. That goes away. By the way, can I ask you a question? How come the other girls made you jealous? If you if they didn't deserve you, then why would you give them your whole verklempt emotion of jealousy? Who? What other girls? What you you said about? that you have been jealous in the past. Yeah. But well, how come you couldn't have been jealous of me? Does that mean you don't love me as much as you loved them? No, I definitely trusted you more. I didn't. I, I didn't think that. Do you love them I, as I, much as you love me? I, I, I think that at the times of Tell my life that we're talking about, I was a bigger catch <gasps> at those times than I were when I was with you. You know, I again, I we were on the bones of our ass. We were trying to start a company. Nobody there was getting paid. You know, we had just, you know, getting to where we were to cost a lot of money, and we still weren't making any money back. It was, uh, it was a tough time. But so you're literally saying to me that your self worth to a woman is based on whether or not your business is doing well that year? Yeah, well, no, I think it's... So you're saying that you're not worth as much to me. I, I would like to say it because you keep telling me what you I'm saying. You said it. No, it's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that it, that particular... You were particular, a bigger catch is what you said. Yes, because at, at the other points in time, yeah, I was doing real well. And when you're doing real well and you're a little bit of a better position, obviously from a man's standpoint, you're going to feel more confident in that. Again, I'm not saying that I felt worthless, but I felt like if you... Wanted to go with someone else. Why not just do that? It wasn't like that, uh, you know, I. Uh, so then do you feel that I gave you unconditional love in the in that point in the relationship? Yes. Yes. I mean, listen, like I said, I want to hang out with your dad and play checkers with him in his retirement home. I wouldn't have done that with just anybody. I'm not an angel. Like you tried to say earlier, I want to say, I'm not that. You get the best out of me. You know what I mean? I wouldn't oh do that. Oh my God. That's so sweet. Huh? I wouldn't do that for just anybody else. So the relationship in the beginning when we were really crossing a threshold of closeness, you hold it down for me while I'm not, while I'm not there. So there's trust being built and... A lack of jealousy, because I have to say, my first love of my life, the person who we like lost our virginity to each other, that love was a real true puppy love, but there was a lot of jealousy. We were both Persian, we were both really possessive, we were like jealous of our respective shadows. So my first healthy oh, love you, you are, yeah, yeah, was, you're a jealous nut. You're, you're a jealous was. nut. No, no. You're still jealous. You're still, it's still in there. 
If I don't wear a bra from here to the, go to the mailbox, you'll make such a big deal out of it. Nick, you, you got a little crazy. guy, man. You got a little guy. No, it's little, been way before that. But even still, it's been, been way before be, that. But now we got a little guy. Like, now oh, the girls are out. The girls are out. The girls are out. The girls are going to pick up the mail. That sounds a little nuts. Uh, well, you're a little nuts. So basically, we're going to be together till the dirt. You and me are going to be together forever. I just also don't want to think in the back of my mind that you are like actually measuring how much of a catch you are means is your self-worth. So if like you're saying that in a man's role, that is a direct correlation to your like stock. Uh, well, and no, should there be but, an And I think it, where you were in life was very intimidating. That's This is no disrespect to, you know, other women, but most of the women that I've come into contact with or that I've been around in my life would, weren't you know, ha have a big real estate career, was on a TV show and, you know, wasn't jet setting here and going to most of them aren't doing that, you know, very independent, taking care of a father and, you know, doing all the things that you were doing. And you're like, I, I you know, I got to go do this. I got to go do that. And, you know, I'm going to Coachella or I'm going to Sundance and I'm, it was intimidating. So I wanted to be better for the both of us. Uh, but the fact that you were willing to accept it and you looked, you know, it wasn't even a thing to you. It wasn't, it was not something that ever came up. It really made me appreciate who you are as a person. And uh, you're a popular person. There's always people out there that are going to say negative things about you. And it's one of the things about you, how, you know, down to earth or I guess accepting you were of me makes me think that all those people are so stupid because they don't really know you. Thank you. Well, don't thank me. I didn't really now know Now I understand why. You fell in love with me. Yeah, it um, certainly wasn't your feet. Yeah, I was like a suit. I know. I need a pedicure right now. You need a um, cure. Or you need a cure or something. Yeah, I think that uh, the way that you put it, um, I'm proud of who I, what I had accomplished at that point in my life. That's why it was so crazy to watch you hysterically cry because you couldn't go to a concert. It was like, oh, wow. I keep like a, sti a like, stiff upper lip oh, wow, okay. with, at funerals and hospitals, but then I don't get yeah, a, man. an all-access pass. Yeah, man. She so wasn't going to be able to go see DJ Mustard, bro. She was losing her shit, man. You know what I mean? So we haven't had a Coachella since... Last year because of COVID, the year before because... Of baby. I was in labor. Yeah. And the year before, we were at the altar. Shams, you will never know how much your mother loves you. The fact that she was willing to, you know, give birth. Well, he came early when you think about it. But either way, like the fact that she... Should was, I have told the doctors to wait another week? I'm surprised you didn't. I remember being in the hospital and they were talking about, you know, the time frame. And she's saying, I'm going to miss Coachella. And it was like, yeah, what you, so Shams, your mother, buddy, she really, I don't think you're ever going to really know how much she loves you. That was my friends actually came to the labor room. Yes. And said hello they on left their Coachella. way in. They left Coachella early. And the, you didn't, like, to her, that was, the, like, the greatest thing that they could have done. And they kept talking about it. We left early. Like, these people are all nuts, bro. They're all crazy about, it's the desert in the middle of the summer. You know what I mean? It's My all... best friends in the Ooh. world leave for Coachella two days before the first day of the festival. And, and talk about it months in advance. Did you see the new lineup? No, we, we, Did you see it? No, we never stopped talking about it. Did you see the it. new lineup? Oh my God! Did you see who's going to be on the third stage? So on the day we're driving home, oh my home, God! Every year we say thirteen hundred and sixty-four days left till Coachella. Oh my God! I can't wait. Woo -woo. Yeah, man. Sorry, no. Anyway, uh... so okay, regarding Coachella, not only did we miss it because I gave birth to your son, but also I chose it as our wedding day, and I'm so glad that mm -hmm. my son was induced early because. Then he fell out of the Taurus astrology sign, and he's an Aries like my dad. That's right. We so, had a book. I forgot about the wedding. We had to book it before the wedding, and we had to book the wedding in advance, obviously. And when we did, we had already booked it, put down the deposit, and then the dates for Coachella came out. She wanted to fucking cancel the wedding. She wanted to postpone it. She thought it was bad juju. She anyway. loves her Coachella. But you see her, she lights up like a freaking Christmas tree the second she you walks guys, in, the second she gets through the metal detectors, she's the happiest you'll ever see her. Just so that you guys know, I highly recommend that people see live shows. It doesn't have to be Coachella, but people should be going to like their local amphitheaters 
anything that's set up outdoor like the Greek and, and experience live music with music that you love or even like, you know, jazz and stuff that you don't think that you would my, like. My wife likes some real obscure Anything shit. except for country. Real, Maybe even country. If you can shit. line dance, then you can do country. She's got a friend that she goes to these shows with that, um, yeah, man, like they'll go to watch someone play a ukulele. You know what I mean? Oh, this is great. This is, this is such good I stuff. Think, I can't wait to see it. I don't think Yeah, it's anyway. great. So, all right, so we've covered Coachella. Now, you've missed the last three Coachellas. One, you know, we got married, as you just said. We had the baby. And then last year with the pandemic, are you are you over it? Now no. that you have the baby? No? No, of course I'm going. All my friends are still going. It's the same crew that you met that day seven years ago. We still all want to go, even if we have kids. We do have kids. Why couldn't you just be cool and like be our babysitter for the weekend? We can all go. Oh, I'm you definitely buy. I'll definitely sit with the I'll with the little guy. I'm not being a babysitter. I'm not watching everybody's kids. They all can find their own babysitters. I'll. Uh, you should I'll come do. to the house and stay on the golf course, and you can shoot balls. Nope. I'd rather not shoot balls. I'd rather sit home with my little guy and where it's not, you know, 130 degrees, and I don't feel like my hit music some enough. golf balls. Yeah. Swing some balls. Yeah. Did I say it wrong? Yeah. Did I sell it wrong? Yeah, you definitely did not do... The, the balls coming out of your mouth were not good. So I guess the the one thing that we could... Con uh, after time and seeing how strong you were, and I've been with you, you've, you've proven to me how strong a person you are. You're very strong physically, mentally, emotionally. But it was nice to see that your breaking point, the point of no Achilles, resistance for you. Achilles, my your Achilles, my Achilles heel. heel. Well, your Achilles heel is, is your feet. It will always be your feet. Shut you up. You got a toe on your foot that looks like an MS-13 gang member. Okay. It's got a teardrop tattoo. It's got a, okay. yeah, a born to lose on on its nail. It looks like it's got a, a gunshot wound. Uh, okay, it's terrifying. Enough. Terrifying. But that's your Achilles heel. I would say, so yeah. So what's yours then, Tommy? Um, You, baby. Oh, you my. are my Achilles heel. Well, other people listening have Achilles heels, too, because they wrote in about it. And I want to read them to you, okay? Sure. So we got one from Daniel from L.A. who wrote in, I invited a date to a concert and she ghosted me. Didn't show up. Spent a lot of money on the tickets. My Uber prepped a picnic basket. Can I Venmo request her for her part? For her part of the money. Like, I mean, yeah. What do you think, Tommy? I mean... <laughs> It's like, are we burning a bridge here or are we forging a relationship? Yeah. Because she's going to tell every single person she knows about this experience based on your Venmo request. I think it's not about the Venmo. I don't know why, but I think that he's more upset that she he did all that for her and she ghosted him. So by Venmoing her, it allows for another... You're keeping it going? Yeah. The conversation flowing? Yeah. Like, yeah. Starting a fight just so that you can get back into yeah, conversation. Yeah, because I don't think you pay for all that stuff and then expect her to pay half after you went on a date, except for the fact she dipped on you and you didn't like her. You were already generous or overly generous to pay for all that, and now to kind of want the money is petty because she don't like you. So to try and stay you know, in the, in the conversation with her, you're going to be petty. So as a man, why don't you just reach out to her and say, what's going on? Why are you ghosting me? I mean, you just can't do that. That's the problem. I would love to cancel ghosting. Well, yeah, she's thing. probably, she's probably out of his league. She's probably a very attractive girl. Maybe she was, then well, why'd she accept the date? Because he's going to pay for all this shit. It sounds like they went to the Hollywood Bowl, at, or he oh, did. Oh, they went to a concert. Because he said that he prepared the picnic, so that's one of the places where you can bring food. You're saying he should walk it off and he doesn't have any right to be upset that he went through all that trouble and expense. And by the way, money doesn't grow on trees. So I'm it's not, not saying it does, but she didn't ask him to do this. It wasn't like she said, well, he didn't say she, that in the question she that she made it. him do this. She accepted a date. All right, yeah. That's, that's wrong to accept the date. Okay, but you didn't show up knowing that... No, he, she says he showed up. She ghosted him at the concert. No? No. Oh, didn't show up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I thought that the person went there and then took off. I, I really want to know your opinion about this, Tommy, because it matters to people. If you go through the trouble of asking a girl out and she stands you up, but in this case, you can't just like be like, ah, I'm at the bar, I'll just grab a drink anyway. This is purchase tickets, got an Uber to go to a specific venue 
and I packed a whole thing, which means I went to the grocery store and probably had to like buy a picnic basket and do a lot of things. No, she's a terrible person. She's a terrible, a terrible human being, this woman. See? She's terrible. She's a terrible I mean, human being. Now do you think that he can Venmo request her? Well, no, I wouldn't even want to. I'd want to, you know, put a flaming bag of dog shit on her front door. You've I done that. No, I've never done the flaming bag. And it wasn't like she was a friend of mine. She's still a very, very good friend of mine. And I, someone told me that there was this website that you could send dog shit to people. So this is a long time ago, too. Like, the internet had just kind of... It was like 2004 or five. So I found it. It was, it was doggydoo.com, and I sent her oh the poo poo grande. It was this uh, Rottweiler. <laughs> and they oh showed you no. a picture of the Rottweiler taking a shit. Oh. And it was sent in this dark vacuum sealed bag so you didn't know Oof. until you opened it up and when you opened it up it was just like there was still grass in the shit it was oh Disgusting. roach if you're listening that's still the funniest thing that ever happened bro I, from time to time it still makes me laugh so yes yes <laughs> i would definitely be someone to sit like that would be my response if i were him well then the united states postal service should be on someone's ass why is vacuum sealed but i don't think it's legal to send defecation oh it definitely is i've done it i've done it and the question is daniel are you really hurt or are you butt hurt is it the money that you, you know on a principle that you want back or are you super bummed out because you went a lot of through a lot of trouble? And you like the girl. And it could you, be both. Yeah. I think that it's not like the money. I think it's the principle, like you said. I would drive around the house around Daniel, the block and put Dan a siren on and you know make it tough for her to sleep at night. Send Chinese food to a house all the time. I like that idea. A Pizza, lot. one after another. I'm big on like revenge pranks. That sounds like a, like my ideal living. You want to know what a good revenge prank is? It's called an upper decca. What's that? You're probably never gonna do it because you're or more a woman a mom go, a like, wife dignified you, civilized human well what well, a couple of those not all of them but right. if you go to someone's house now you got it's it almost has to be in a party setting because if it's just like you and four or five people at the house they're probably going to know it's you but the tank that sits on the back of the toilet yes you shit in that that's disgusting, Tommy. I'm just saying. I've okay. never done it. I know someone. You know somebody that's done it, too. Next time we go back to Queens, I'll show you the person that did it. We were at uh, Jersey in um, Seaside Heights, and he did it in a house. He was like, yo, I got to upper deck him. And yeah, you take the tank off, you shit in the tank, and apparently it's really, really tough to get out. Guess what? Those toilets are no longer. Now it's a solid one piece. So thankfully, everyone who's remodeled their house since 1973 has a different tank that cannot be dismantled and pooped inside. So the verdict is... We beat, we beat that horse to death. No, no. Daniel, don't do the Venmo request because then she's going to drag you for your life. She's going to tell every single person. Eventually, it's going to get back to like it was actually you. You're going to have to cut your losses. Yeah, and just do take the that one on thing. the chin, Daniel. Take that one on the chin and, you know, live and learn for next time. I agree. And now the next question that we had, this question comes from Cynthia, uh, which I, I actually saw this one already. That's why I was, I was thrown off because this was this is actually funny. I, I went to Stagecoach, which is the... Hillbilly Coachella. I went to stagecoach with this guy. I'm seeing, and he disappeared for a while. Then I literally saw him dancing up on another girl, bumping and grinding and kissing. When I confronted him, he said that we're not in a relationship, and I don't think it was a big deal. My question is, should I let that go and keep seeing him? He says he wants to keep dating. I would definitely 100% be emotionally jarred. I don't know how that's his fault. I, I don't know how this is his fault. That's why I was throwing a little before, you know, it, unless it was already laid out that like we're in a relationship when we're going to this thing, which it clearly does not sound like it was. It sounds like they went to stagecoach and, you know, I've been to those festivals. You walk in and that's it, bro. Have at it. You know what I mean? It's like Caligula, the fall of Rome. Go ahead. Go nuts. So I don't think that um, he's doing anything different. It might she might have went in there with with different expectations, but I think that that's on her. I don't necessarily think that's his fault. Wait, what? This is very confusing. So are you gonna let the guy get away with doing that because you're gonna let the status of your relationship like define his behavior? Because his behavior 
is gonna be they're dating shitty. Though. He's They're dating. Dating to me means that I'm dating you. I might be dating three other people. The definition today, modern definition, Nima taught me of oh, dating uh, is that you're like in a committed almost. I, no, I, no, I, uh, dating I, I'm is kind of like I, boyfriend. Because Nima, Nima said okay. it's not how I date things. I'm sorry. My okay. whole life, when you're dating, means just that you're dating. Like casual? Yeah, it could be dating 10 people. There's a two different people say we're in a relationship or no, we're just dating. Uh, question for you. Because it, dating means that you can so be. So she there. says when she confronted him, he said we're not in a relationship. So if you and I are seeing each other, you and me, it's yes. just hypothetically. We weren't what we already slept with each other. That's and then and then you could just go well, off, wander that. away. She didn't say that. Stagecoach, these festivals, like if they're in the same peer group, that's something that people go together with like 20 people. You know, for all you know, it's like, yeah, all right, cool, we'll go. And he's dancing with a girl. Ooh, Cynthia, girl, I do not think that is acceptable. I think he misbehaved. His behavior is awful, and he's revealing his character to you right now. And justifying that is not okay you definitely know your self-worth and you deserve better so no 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 now you can ghost this guy you have my full blessing to ghost him over that behavior neil okay last question why don't you read a bit okay so this question is actually from a fellow female persian woman uh, my girl mitra says i was crying the other day when my boyfriend was over i'll spare you the details about why I was crying, but I was hoping my guy would console me. He didn't. He actually did the opposite, told me to walk it off, basically. He gave me a pat on the back. Can true love be tough love? Ooh, you do that to me a lot, Tommy. Yeah, walk it off. Walk it off. What are you doing? You, you, you sitting around crying. You know, can you realize how crazy that is? And just sitting there crying. So the problem is that you guys, men, sometimes you don't know how to console us when we're upset. Yeah, because we don't sit around and cry. So we don't have any reference. We don't know what that's like to sit there at that's the table. That's not true. You've cried. I'm not saying I've never cried in my life. I'm saying that I don't sit there like you walk in on a Tuesday and you're sitting there having a good cry. Guys don't do that. We don't understand how to console, how to sympathize, or how to deal with that. We're like, wow, she's in our emotions. And not to sound like a dick because guys are all juvenile and stupid. We're all like, wow, she must be on her period. That's where we're at. So, you know, a pat on the back and a walk it off is really the best we got. We're going to educate you right now for a moment. Men have hormones as well. No one said we didn't. You guys have hormone swings as well. We don't ever sit there and cry. Don't just say we're just sitting around and crying. We're not, I'm not just saying that, that you're just sitting around and crying. I'm saying that I know women and you do too. That every now and then, like to sit and have a good so cry. So this is exactly what's wrong. So instead of saying, sweetie, what's wrong? You're like, you just automatically like assume that there's a reason why he's just, she's just sitting there crying. What about asking yeah, her yeah, why? No, no, so that, that's, yeah, sorry. What about asking her why? No, because you... What does yeah. it not occur to you? Let's go walk down that labyrinth. Let, let's let's yes, go exactly. into that rabbit hole. What, let's ask her why. What? Exactly. You're crazy. Don't you want to be compassionate? Nuts? You don't even know why. You're sitting there and you don't even know why you're crying sometimes. It's like, all right. Yeah, no, I'm just. I, and then it becomes you. That's the reason. All of a sudden you ask the stupid question and it's like, you are the worst. You never even know what to. It's like, whoa, bro. It's way easier just to be like, all right, give a pat on the back. Say you'll be all right, kid. You want to rub some dirt on it? Do you think of yourself as someone who should comfort his wife? Yeah, I do comfort you. How? I don't know. I don't but know. Let's say your son cries. Are you going to ask him what's the matter? Yeah. But so, you can't. My son is like me. Okay. He's going to give you a straight answer. You're not going to give a straight answer. Oh. You're gonna, it, it's three different circles. Oh, my God. You don't even know. And I'm then you get blamed away. for stuff. And then it's like, wow, how did this even happen? I don't even know how I got here. Okay. 20 seconds okay, ago, okay, it okay. was fine. And now, now we're in this crazy, whoa. You, yeah. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be the one answering. So here's my advice. Mitra Jun, we need to teach our men how to console us. You need to write it out. If I cry, and Tommy. Put that on the list, guys. Tommy. Well, now we, now we need to I, have some If you class. see, if your husband or your boyfriend finds you crying, because we have a lot of men and women couples that listen to us. You know that, right? Yeah, I'm aware. Okay. I'm aware. And if, the guys are sitting there like, yeah, I don't know what, what so, the fuck she's crying about either. Just like we know that there are couples that are listening to our podcast right now together. If your woman is having a bad day, whether she's crying or just 
doesn't seem happy, take a moment, walk over to her, put your arm around her, tell her she's beautiful, give her a hug, ask her, do you want to talk about it, sweetheart? Yeah, listen, you'll get the other side of that too. That's I just want to be left alone and just stop trying to fix everything. I just in my emotion. Like, I'm sorry, man. You guys are a barrel of monkeys sometimes. It's like, yo, dude, we don't know. Can't win. All right, I'm going to hang out over here. Let you be all crazy. The tissues are over there on the counter. And if you need anything, um, let me know. But I'll be, I'll be over here watching the game, you know? You want to make sure that when you look at your man, you can see him as someone who's going to comfort you and he's going to be someone because that's how you're also going to be best friends. You're not just going to become alienating each other because if you don't do it, then she's going to go somewhere else and find someone who does <laughs> okay. know how to comfort okay. her and okay. does know how to be a good listener <sighs> and does know how to console her and help her find her way back. So you grab that person and you say, what do we need to do to turn this around? Is it an action? Is it let's just watch a movie? Do you want to do you really want to like just go for a hike and walk it off together literally? But like make sure that you guys are being that for each other in the relationship so that it stays healthy and not just there for like the good times or for the sex or for the games or whatever you guys do in relationships. I mean, I need to know. I need to say to you when we get along the most, that's because those are the moments when I'm making you feel seen, loved, and heard, and vice versa. All right, there you have it. Next week, we're going to have an interesting episode. We're going to answer some of the questions. It's going to be a and a episode. So if you guys have any questions that you want to submit to us, go through our Instagram, Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ, or Twitter, or any of the social platforms that you use. Send your questions in, and we're going to answer them next week. Any question that we answer on air, you get a Dolph Vita t-shirt. So send them in, and uh, we look forward to it. You got anything else to say? Any other pearls of wisdom? Sweet cheeks. I really could spend like another hour talking about how important it is to be compassionate to each other in a relationship. I bet you could. I, I'm actually, I think that this warrants like a whole topic in and of itself that we're going to get into after this question. Thanks for your question, because I think one of the best things about having these conversations is when you're going through your life and every day is so hectic, you don't have time to stop and check in on each other. You know, we're all so busy chasing after our goals and our jobs. Make sure that, you know, we're keeping it tight emotionally. Stay on the same level. That's what I'm saying. All right, so thanks for everybody for tuning in and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. We're so happy you're coming on this journey with us. It would mean so much to us if you would rate our show, give us five stars, leave a nice comment and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all our new episodes. You could also follow us on all platforms at Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. See you next week.